sound so again this is a different instrument so you're sort of changing kind of what you like the marimba for in the first place or what is it is it just that you're comfortable playing it or what um it's whatever the songs are calling for is the sound that i would end up using if the song calls for marimba sound i would use it but mm -hmm. um more often than not it doesn't mm -hmm. um so i would use the various sounds i would mix my own sounds and and you know go through the different um effects and stuff like that um if I have to use a marimba sound, I would probably prefer to use a real one. So in that case, it'll just be solving the logistical problem. But again, I don't think of it as a substitute for the marimba. It's a whole new instrument that um, that basically is a synthesized synth that I can use um, utilizing the technique that I've had for years. Right. So rather than switching to piano and trying to, to learn a new instrument and the sounds, I can use the mallet technique, and it is different. I mean, if you hear the, the, the playing, it sounds different. You can tell that it's not a pianist. Even if I use a piano sound, the nature of the, the percussiveness of um, the, the technique that I use it gives it up that it's not a pianist playing. It's a marimba player using a piano sound, which gives it that unique um, okay. sound. One of the really cool things about the marimba I have is if you leave the mallet on the marimba itself, it'll sustain. Mm -hmm. So it's like a piano. On regular marimba, you would never have to use that technique just because nothing happens if you leave the mallet on the wood. <laughs> it's just silent. Um, but um, as far as 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 far as um, using other synths, I've used keyboard regular keyboard synths. Um, but it doesn't feel as comfortable. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel as at home as it does with the marimba. And part of it is the visual element as well. I mean, the physicality of it. I just love standing up on stage. I hate sitting behind something big and, and hiding. I love the fact that I can stand and jump around and move around and you have that, you know, thing in, in front of you and it's just a different um, feeling to be on stage doing that. And you're whacking it with a mallet, which is... Four yeah. of them. Which is great. <laughs> so, so like, you saw this, how, how long ago was this when you bought this? It was like... That was about five years ago now. So have there been other things that have come out that you're thinking, oh, that would be great to have, or are you sticking... I tried a mallet cat, um, and for a while considered it, but honestly, I, I feel like the Lumina has more sophisticated features, and it, part of it is I'm really used to it, and I mm -hmm. love playing it. Um, the only reason why I was even considering switching was because I was nervous that when Don Buchla stopped making them, I thought that I'm in trouble as far as what if it breaks, what if something happens. But luckily there is, um, there is somebody on the West Coast, um, Joel Davel is a, a person who's now repairing it, and he's also thinking about starting to make them again, which uh, makes me very happy. Well, how long ago did they stop making them? Um, I think about three years ago. Mm. I'm not completely sure. It was after I bought mine, and I got a. I actually got a phone call uh, shortly after I got it, or another year or so after I got it, saying they, they were interested in, in buying it. And by then I was so in love with it, there was no way that I was parting with it. And I said, actually, no. In fact, if you have another one, I would buy a second one just to have in the closet. And he said, oh, um, there is a list of people waiting to get one. And I said, well, then why are you not making them? And they said, well, the list is not long enough. Mm. Which is kind of sad, but um, I'm really hopeful that Joel will start making them again. And um, I'll be very happy to assist him in any way possible as far as, you know, promoting the <laughs> instrument and playing it out. And do you actually do that? I mean, as far as, like, talking I do. to people that do... I've done a few clinics on it, um, and it, it's great to show other marimba players the possibilities of what they can do with the instrument they've chosen, just because it's very easy to get caught in that um, narrow world of the percussion family. You know, you you can do Bach <laughs> inventions on marimba, and that's cool, and you can do all the repertoire that's written for the marimba, but it's, a, it's such a young instrument that it doesn't have a tradition um, of that many years of, of repertoire. So it's kind of limited in that way. And then 
for me, it's really rewarding to just go to a high school or a college and play rock and play jazz and play fusion and play Balkan music and just, you know, kind of open up people's horizon as far as what you can do with that instrument. You said that the Lumina has some more sophisticated um, features. What kind of things, like, I don't know if you want to compare the, the, the Mallet Cat, you said it's a Mallet Cat? Uh -huh. I was looking at that. Um, between the two, like, what does the Lumina have that's different? That the main it? thing that the Lumina has that the Mallet Cat doesn't um, is the sustain that I was mentioning. The fact that I can leave the mallets on the instrument and it will sustain as long as I want it to. You can achieve the same with the sustain pedal. But the sustain pedal will sustain the entire instrument the way a piano would, whereas this is exactly what a piano would do if you leave some of your fingers down and you lift others. So you can do voice leading um, in more interesting ways that way. Um, it also has a feature where if you slide the mallet up and down the, the bar, it'll um, give you the, the slide effect, uh, the slide guitar effect. So basically you can change the pitch. Um, and actually there's a video called don't know what you're living for, where the opening uh, motif of the song is, is on the marimba, and you just go wee -oo, wee -oo, just by sliding the mallet on the actual instrument. <laughs> so you don't need any pedals for that, you don't need any knobs or anything, it's completely a control that's in your hand. It also has some strips on the side of it where you can put envelope effects or any sort of effect really and just control um, the, um, effect, the amount of effect you want to put just by sliding up and down um, your mallet on the instrument. It also has an effect where you stroke down produces one sound and when you lift up it produces a second sound. So you can, have, you can control the amount of time that passes by how long you keep the mallet on the instrument and it um, recognizes each mallet individually, the color coded. So you can send a different MIDI channel through each mallet, which means I can have my left hand be bass the whole time while my right hand is piano, um, and not split the keyboard, which it also does, of course. But rather than splitting the keyboard, you can just have each um, hand be a different different sound. And so it sounds like the guy was a marimba player who, who invented it, right? There, Don Buchla was not, but he had a team of people working very closely with him who were. Because it sounds like it really was somebody who knows tactically what it's like to yeah. play, you know what I mean? Like what you would, intuitively what you would do. Yeah. <laughs> the people who created that instrument ex knew exactly what they were doing.